see. Test, test. Testing. Test, test.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Greater Lawrence Technical School District Committee meeting, October 26. It is time is 6 p.m. Hey, can everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Sorry, we had an employee, Anna Medina, lost a 20-year-old son. Uh, I was wondering if we could recognize him also in the moment of silence. Thank you. First order of, of is to approve the minutes of October 13, 2021. Could I have so, a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye, Rocoso. Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. Ms. Tisla? No. Ms. Mr. Lamontang? Yes. Ms. Marmel? Yes. And Mr. Cirillo? Chair Holtz, yes. Uh, motion passes. Uh, Financial report, cash balance report, um, Jerry. Sure, thanks, Frank. Uh, cash balance report as of October 19, 2021. Account balance on October 5th, 2021 was 2,119,796. Spot 88. We had deposits from October 6th to October 19th of 172,605,32. Less uh, payroll on October 14th of 894, 138, spot 81. And less warrant number six on October 12th of 355, 675, 05. Leaves us with a book balance on October 19th, 2021 of 1,042,588, spot 34. And a corresponding bank balance on the same day of 2,375,025, spot 65. In our MMDT account, uh, account balance on October 5th, 2021 was 6307997 spot 66. Same balance on October 19th for and a total operating cash balance of 7350586. Make a motion to accept as presented. I want to recognize and welcome back uh, Frank Rossi. How you doing, Frank? Motion on the table by, made by Mr. Lamontagne, seconded by um, Ms. Fitzgerald. Any questions? Hearing none, can I get a roll call soon? Um, Mr. Rossi? This is for the cash balance. Okay, do, you, do we know what? We're gonna abstain, wait, right? Should he abstain? Okay. Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. Ms. Disla? Yes. Ms. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lamontang? Yes. Ms. Mamo? Yes. And Mr. Cirillo? Chair votes yes. Consolidated cash reconciliation report, superintendent. Uh, 
Hey, you, you mic. You should have a copy of the consolidated cash reconciliation report. Yeah, that was just passed out to everyone. So glad to answer any questions. questions thank you and budget report so uh, hold on a second hold on, wait a minute so zero yes if we were following along on the um, agenda I wanted to talk about the revolving account for a moment I okay um, I had a question. Uh, it is a really, really healthy balance with the cafeteria fund, and I know that oftentimes it's just a timing issue, um, but that is a really healthy balance. So my question would be, is this because of the um, great amount of subsidies we had? That's question number one. And then um, I had a thought I did not notice, or do I remember us voting? on a revolving fund for the upcoming Hall of Fame, knowing that there will be monies coming in and monies going out. Do we need to anticipate that and set one up, or is it a line item in the athletic budget? Which area should that go in? Thank you. Did you say um, Halloween? Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> it's the season. Um, so, but then can you answer there or? So, uh, I, I haven't, a request hasn't come to me to start a, a line item uh, in the budget for the Hall of Fame uh, activity yet. So, uh, I can touch base with that committee and, and uh, bring it back to the district if, uh, if it's not going to be part of our activity, uh, student activities fund. Uh, I'm not sure because the request hasn't come to me. So I'll uh, do some investigating between now and the next meeting and, and can come back with an answer to, for you. Thank you. Any further questions on the revolving fund? On the, she had a question on the cafeteria. On, on the cafeteria, I, <coughs> I, I would say at this point, it's a, uh, a timing thing in terms of uh, how uh, our cash flow goes through pay, our paying out, paying out vendors versus ha uh, having money coming in. Any further questions? Budget report, attendant. So uh, we have to make a, we're gonna need a vote tonight on adjustment for our assessments to our community in uh, usually the first week in November, which we got this week, we get our final uh, tally from the state what our exact final number will be. And so at this time, we typically uh, have to revote on our what the numbers will be, how we uh, uh, assess our uh, communities. Uh, so um, you should have a, a document in front of you that uh, shows you uh, the changes from our original uh, assessment to what our final assessment be to our communities, which will then uh, get another, they'll get another letter with that final assessment once the committee votes on this tonight. Um, I don't have, in my packet, I don't have. So do you have another copy of that? From my packet? Oh, oh, you put it in here? There's all the stuff that you have in front. I have another one anyway. So there's all the stuff you have right there. Right here. Where's your Maybe. Oh, it's in that folder. No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. All right, hold on. I think I have another one anyways. I just want to review the numbers. All right, hold on. Okay. We, ju think we just got the uh, just got the report this week, the final, um, and um, 
Joanne put this together before we have it for this evening. So these are our, our uh, final uh, uh, community budget assessments for 2021-22. So if you look at the uh, original numbers, for each of our districts. So it's broken down. The first column is the, uh, our um, foundation budget uh, with the ESSER um, money added to it, so the final number, and that was um, what they will officially be uh, assessed. Um, so originally it came to, when you added it all, it came to 5880 2,584. The final adjustment is actually very close to the same, 5,883,228. So it's just a, a little bit less. Um, then non-foundation is where you see the biggest uh, change. Um, non-foundation uh, comes to 1,771,873 uh, with an adjustment of uh, final assessment of one million five hundred ninety five dollars and seventy one cents and the reason for that is the state has um, provided more funds for busing so it reduces our assessment to our community so it's the uh, busing costs uh, uh, that impacted this number for the most part and so the total was seven million four hundred seventy eight thousand two hundred ninety nine um, for uh, which is uh, 176,158, which is for the most part non-fine foundation. So in essence, uh, the adjusted budget uh, has little to no impact on our operational uh, budget, so which is a good thing. So I, I just need a, uh, a vote from the committee to, to accept these new assessments for our communities. Could I get a motion to So accept? moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. If I am reading this correctly, John, the numbers on the very bottom indicate that each community, in fact, is being assessed less than the original amount? That's correct. And that's beca mostly because of the extra money for busing? Yes. Well, I don't think they'll argue with that. That's great. Any further discussion? Roll call, Sue. Mr. Rossi? Should okay. Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. Ms. Disla? Yes. Mr. Lamontagne? Yes. Ms. Marmel? Yes. And Mr. Cirillo? Chair will yes. Donations, seeing none. Articles, seeing none. Publications. Public participation. Anybody? Publications. Close. Seeing none. Uh, report from the superintendent. Uh, student report. Ms. Maureen Wright. Um, hi. Um, I'm going to be talking about things like our clubs, sports, and the student activities. Let me press that. Um, the class of 2023 is running an online clothing site in October. Their class um, can purchase t-shirts, sweatshirts, and joggers with the class of 2023 on them and their Phoenix and Flame logo. Uh, the Creative Arts Club has a large turnout in the club so far, um, and they are hoping to have an art show in the library at the end of the year. Um, in Tabletop Game Club, uh, it was previously called Fantasy RPG Club, they play Dungeons and Dragons and other tabletop games. They currently have over 20 students consistently coming in. Student Council has a big number of students attending. Right now, um, they are brainstorming upcoming events. And they hosted a sock drive lasting the month of October. And also did Latin Night, which occurred October 14th from 3 to 4, where students learn the basics. Peer mediation isn't really a club, but rather a program for students who have a disagreement uh, with a peer, dealing with rumors, misunderstandings, and a lot more. 
On October 8th, they, to acknowledge Bullying Prevention Month, they held a socket to bullying event where GLTS, um, where everyone at GLTS could wear crazy socks. Um, in yearbook, they ran an October fundraiser um, where you could donate a certain amount and they'll give you tickets and a treat for a chance to win one of the wreaths for the season. And I believe the drawing was on the 22nd. Um, for GSA, it's a club that provides a supportive environment for students who identify as LGBTQ or just support it. Um, it's not a club where you have to place any label on yourself. They have about 35 kids consistently coming in and they just held their um, voting for elected positions today. For sports, um, girls soccer um, has entered the season defending its CAC championship. They have seven juniors, eight sophomores, and 15 freshmen. On their varsity squad, they have five freshman students playing. Um, on golf team, um, they hosted and competed in a CAC league golf championship and won. This is the first time ever for the program. They also competed in a state tournament um, as a team on Tuesday, October 19th. For girls volleyball, senior night was last Wednesday at 4 p.m. for JV and 5.15 for varsity. They celebrated four seniors this season and have 36 players in the program in total. Um, fall sports are coming to a close soon and winter, winter sports registration is now open. Um, they start um, after Thanksgiving on the Monday, which is November 29th. They offer boys basketball, girls basketball, swim, cheering, wrestling, and indoor track. Um, on October 22nd, we had homecoming. Over 450 tickets were sold. Students had the option to wear their costumes or dress up. They had a DJ, dancing, food, and drinks for purchase. Mr. Thompson, Miss Gillis, and Principal Zelensky all got pied in the face, which is very, very fun and exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I sent out a form to all students asking for feedback on how their year was going, and most students said they were happy to be, ba to be back in school. It helps them socialize more, not get distracted, and stay on top of their work. Um, as just a response to that, to any students worried um, about the Cosmo shop, there will be a renovation in the future. To any students struggling with mental health, contact your guidance counselor and they will connect to you um, with resources and support. And to any student who can't afford the GLTS wear, contact Dean Gillis or Dean Vogel and they can try to help you with arrangements. Um, and that's all that I have, and the best way to just stay updated during the week is through the GLTS Instagrams. Uh, it's official um, underscore GLTS or GLTS principal, which is Ms. Zelensky's. Thank you, um, and welcome. And thank you for the, the much voice that you're bringing to the c committee from the students. Um, and uh, informing us of well, everything that's going on with the student population. Any questions? Ms. Fitzgerald. I just have to make one comment. I can't let the athletic event of the golf championship go unnoticed. It truly is the first in the history of the school. So congratulations to the student athletes, to the coaches, and I, I, it's, just, it's just fabulous. Mr. Lamontagne? Yeah, through you, Mr. Chairman. I was wondering if Maureen had any questions for us. Uh, no, I don't have any questions. <laughs> Sorry. Any other questions? Thank you. Please, because I was actually looking around for it, because I can't see anything that's on there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Superintendent evaluation. John. So uh, I gave uh, the district committee my evaluation last week, uh, my goals last week and went through everything. Uh, there was, uh, I think, I'm not sure that the committee wanted to review the um, the, the standards and the indicators to see if there were any other standards or indicators they thought were important to address within my goals. And so uh, they, the committee was going to 
review that and, and then uh, if any other recommendations were to be made would be made at this particular meeting. Anybody has a recommendation for standards? From standard one, uh, before I start it, um, Mr. Gerald? Yes, I made this comment towards the end of receiving this at the last meeting that I felt it was very ambitious. Um, I, when I had a chance to read it in depth, um, I still feel that it's very ambitious. And I just want to make sure, asking the superintendent, um, I don't want us to agree to all of these and set them up for a not failure, but um, tough review. F and I'll use as an example the parent newsletter for the superintendent to weekly put out a parent newsletter versus one coming out from the whole school, including the principal, including our PR person. Um, I just feel that would be more realistic than having it be if it's his goal that one gets printed every week or sent out every week I'm fine with that but not that um, you know weekly is really ambitious um, bi-weekly seems more realistic considering or even exactly um, monthly I just feel that we we do a pretty good done good job of communicating in many, many areas, many uh, styles, kinds. And um, so that, I guess, is the only one that stuck out with me as something that might be difficult to accomplish for everybody in the school, including the principal. I, I just, and I'd ask the superintendent if he wanted to modify that or the rest of the committee. <coughs> So uh, to that point, uh, Marilyn, when I was looking at it uh, again the other day, I in my narrative I have once a month, but in the document in the lower it says once a week is was intended to be once a month. Although we are working on a specific template that uh, the uh, principal and I are going to pair up and, and send out a communication to the parents. Our goal is to try to do it at least bi-weekly, minimum bi-weekly. Uh, and we're doing a template where we can, uh, all the administrators and staff will have an opportunity to contribute to the newsletter that we're putting out. Uh, so we're working on that template and hope to have it uh, done by the end of, uh, before Thanksgiving uh, or early November so we can send our first issue out there. Uh, and uh, it's a combination of the principal and myself. Uh, when I, when we talked to the, the principal and I talked uh, last week and then again today about it, uh, that we felt that uh, it would be more impactful if she and I uh, did it uh, one newsletter so people so that we're um, they're communicating consistently with both of us and, and we're not being in conflict it would be less difficult for parents to follow what's going on in the building and then we were also uh, believed that it would be important to get feedback from so we'll have month uh, every time we send our letter information about COVID information about uh, what's going on with sports, uh, an article, uh, some information about what some of the things are that are going in the shop, so more broad uh, information so that it would be more interesting to the parents and more impactful in terms of building relationships across the school with parents to have a voice from uh, not just us, but everybody in the school. So uh, that's what, uh, what my goal would, uh, what I'd like to have my goal be is to c uh, produce that kind of uh, communication. I'm going to intend to agree with Marilyn. Once a week is going to is definitely going to be, even if you're working with a team, might be a little bit too much. Um, but I, I would also suggest you modify that. Um, but we could look at that now. Um, any anybody else before I turn it over to Ms. Fitzgerald? Ms. Fitzgerald. I would just, I don't know if you need this in a motion or if John is willing 
to have it changed on the timeline um, to be monthly or um, biweekly, whatever that final decision is, but just remove the weekly part from it. I'd be happy to do that and put it down as monthly. The, the one other thing I would address is when you look at superintendent's initiatives for school year, these are all initiatives that I, I am working on to try to accomplish. Hold on for a second. Does everybody have Does everyone this have package? Oh. If you, if you look at the second to last page, um, which one? Which packet, John? In the uh, this packet that Sue just passed out, no, the black and white one. Okay. Yep. Um, if you look at the second to last page, you'll see at the bottom where it says other superintendent initiatives for school year 2021. Those are initiatives that I'm uh, will be working on throughout the year. Uh, some of them are going to take more than one year, but they're initiatives that I will continue to. Uh, work on and uh, uh, be part of my uh, uh, all, all year work. So, uh, give you a perfect example, um, such as the um, expanding or starting a new program uh, around um, what was aviation and environmental science. So, the aviation program is going to take two years to get off the ground simply because of the space necessary to start that program. Uh, I will update you some more later on in the meeting about uh, progress in that in that area. Uh, so that's going to be a two-year. So some of these actions that I'm working on uh, will be started this year and com uh, hope that most of them will probably get done this year, but some may go into the following year just simply because of the size of the project and the work that needs to be put in place in order to uh, make it become a reality. But I will give, continue to give you updates throughout the year on all these initiatives as uh, as they progress. Uh, from standard one, does anybody, does anyone, and anything on standard one that anyone wants to add? Here, nothing. Uh, standard two. I want to add um, B, superintendent, staff hiring and retention data, and school um, district um, PD plans. Which page? Standard two. What page is that, Frank? Um, B, um, staff hiring, retention data, and school district PD plans. Okay. This is page Under one. Human Resource Management and Development. Yep. Management Operations, Standard 2. Yep. Anything from standard th um, three, family uh, and community engagement? Because I think, Superintendent, you already got uh, from, yes. based on your thing on C, um, and I think you already had one for, which one was it? No, throwing a blank. Um, Assessments. Curriculum and assessment. Curriculum and assessments? Was um, one of, is my other. Uh, goal to work on a uh, standard one yes a and c uh it is let's see. i think that's more than enough yep standard it's actually uh standard three uh three a three a Uh, 
So this one, that one. I want to add this one. Yep. Are these two you said? So it's uh, standard A is community engagement. So that falls under here. This one. Yep. And then the other one is standard, uh, first standard one one A, which is curriculum. Yep. One A. One A. Standard one A. And standard three A. Correct. Yep. yep. And standard four C. Correct. And I want to add standard two B. I'll put a, uh, I'll put an action plan together for the new one you gave me, Frank, mm -hmm. for the committee. Yeah. Any questions? Ms. Marmel? I just want to make sure that I'm understanding the standards that we're choosing for the superintendent here. Uh, so far, I'm hearing five in total. Is it five? Uh, standard one curriculum, yeah. standard two human um human resource management yep. development and then i believe you just added 2b did you just add 2b um chair 2b 2b 2b, 2B. staff hiring retention and um, okay that's human one? resource management standard development. standard 3a is the other one no three no. On, on two it was standard um b it was um b Human resources, staff hiring and retention data, school data, I mean district PD plans, and Does annual induction and mentoring report fall under uh, 2B. 2B. Okay. And then we said standard three, family and community engagement, and right. then lastly, standard four. Well, four, um, I see four fall, falling under standard three. I think they're one in the same. Cultural proficiency? Yeah, uh, so it's under my standard, under standard 3A, memos, newsletters, all of that is part of what I put under standard 3 as part of my action plan. Okay, so, yeah. but what I'm saying is we're not then using standard 4 because it already falls under another standard? Right, falls under standard, yes, under standard 3A. 3, okay, so 1, 2, 3, so 4 total standards in total we're using? So it's three standards and uh, one, two, three, four indicators. Okay, I think I'm using two and two B as if it was two separate standards. Okay. Yes, I just have a concern. Um, John gave us his uh, goals, which is what we asked him to do, and now we are adding more. And in that training we went to, we were specifically asked not to add on two, three, four. Uh, I mean, to have at least two or three, but not to have as many as it makes it the full time Ooh. job just to. One out of each standard they recommended, not two or three from the same standard. But didn't we just add two more from nope, one standard? Just one. Okay, so could Me. you have, um, could our recording secretary read back again, which I know what we have, but what we have added. So, Marilyn? Yep. Standard one, curriculum and um, instructional leadership. Yep. 
set is A, uh, management operations, B, standard two, standard three, uh, engagement indicator, A, family community engagement, and standard four, and A are actually the same, um, standard 3A are actually the same thing. So it's just gonna be standard A uh, from standard three. Frank, any questions? Okay. Anybody else? Leo, quick question. Oh. What kind of evidence is usually collected in the past? I know for some of them, yeah, based on some of the stuff he's gonna be producing, like the Muse letter and stuff like that, are evidence enough that he's meeting those standards? C correct, yeah. And, and then as he would achieve, as the superintendent, as either he or she would achieve anything along the year, that's, he would go by that. You know, is what we would do. Thank you. Um, now, as a time frame, um, I think since we started this a little bit later, um, mid check should be February. But that's my thoughts only. Anybody else? Mid check to see that he's already uh, achieving some of the stuff besides he's going to be producing um, the evidence, but the mid, mid check point to where to see where he's actually in line to achieving his goals. If, if, if anything needs to be realigned, um, I would say it would be February because we're starting this a little bit later than anticipated. Uh, for our, we have many, we have two meetings in February. Yes. So for our second, uh, last meeting in February. February 15. February 15? Yes. So committee's last meeting in February. On February 15 for the superintendent to come back and highlight everything he's accomplished up to then and why he still needs to um, um, put um, do. Any questions? Can I get in the form of motion? Okay. Vivian? I just want to make sure with the superintendent, um, do you find it feasible for you uh, to already make a report in February? Yes, I can do an update on February. That uh, seems like a reasonable time. So he's going to be also bringing us um, everything he's done through there, um, usually in form of whatever he's done. If he's accomplished a newsletter, he's going to be showing us, bringing us a copy of the newsletter. Um, PD will be the agenda he's put with staff and so forth. Any other questions? Move. Set. Any questions? Roll call, Sue. There we go. Oh, sorry. Um, Mr. Rossi? Yes. Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. Ms. Disla? Yes. Mr. Lamontagne? Yes. Ms. Mamel? Yes. And Mr. Cirillo? Sure, what's well, yes. Um, the next one will be on the superintendent evaluation. Who's going to compel the information once the um, final report is done in May? So, or is it June? The okay. final report is done in Sorry. June, correct? Sorry. The final report for the evaluation is done in June? Yes. June. Who should compel? compile all the information once the um, evaluation, individual evaluations have gone out to these members for on the superintendent evaluation. I move that the chair should be the one to compile uh, 
the evaluation. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, I got a motion. Second. Um, any questions for discussion? Actually, I got a question. Um, and I don't know if Leo, you might be able to answer this or Sue. Um, the individual evaluations, could I be sent electronically? What sent in what to you electronically or to the state? Yeah, it could be it could be sent to uh, electronically. Yes, yeah. Okay. Works out better for uh, well for me. Uh, I don't know about anybody else. Um, I should make a roll call on the last motion. Mr. Rossi. Yes. Ms. Fitzgerald. Yes. Ms. Disla. Yes. Mr. Lamontagne. Yes. Ms. Mamo. Yes. And Mr. Cirillo. Chair votes yes. Aviation. So, aviation program update, uh, Superintendent. So, on the aviation program update, we have filed with the Department of Ed a uh, uh, a uh, intent to start a uh, aviation program and a environmental science program, and also uh, we have filed for a, a PG program um, around. Um, the uh, automation and I mean uh, robotics and automation uh, we've been um, approved uh, to go to step two on all these programs um, right now the one we've done most of the work on to this point has been uh, the aviation program we've uh, uh, last week I believe it was last week we had a, another meeting with the uh, people at the airport, uh, the manager of the airport in Lawrence, and a couple of companies that are out there. One of the companies is a helicopter, uh, owns a helicopter company, company out there. And uh, our biggest challenge is to find a, uh, there are about 12 different criteria we have to meet in order, by May, in order to get approval for next year. Um, but our biggest challenge of, uh, will be to find a space uh, in order to uh, put the program. So um, in that meeting, the, the main purpose of our meeting was to see if there's any space or opportunity at the airport to uh, run the program. And, and, and so th through that meeting, uh, we spoke with uh, uh, two of the owners. The biggest challenge, <coughs> challenge is we would need some kind of a uh, uh, hangar and that would fit an airplane. Uh, and so in speaking to everybody, um, the, that is the biggest challenge because hangar space is in high, high demand. Uh, there's not enough, anywhere near enough hangar space. But the gentleman that is, uh, has a helicopter uh, a company out there who repairs helicopters um, is uh, in the process of trying to, he has some land out there and he can build He's planning on building a, a hangar, 140 by 180 foot hangar out there, which is a huge uh, space. And um, we talked about uh, his willingness to lease some of that space to us to start a program. So he is in very positive about doing that, is willing to do that. So what we would do is try to, uh, uh, at some point, uh, meet with, with his lawyer and our lawyer if the committee's thinks that that would be something uh, they would be interesting in uh, pursuing a, a lease but I will bring more information to the committee before I ask you to do that uh, I just want to give you a heads up that we're, we're where we're kind of heading to uh, we are have we in meeting with them we also talk to them about um, who may be on our advisory some of the pathways and companies and corporations that do business with the airport that would be important for us to have on our committee so uh, we're putting our advisory committee together and hoping to have our first meeting sometime in November it will include some of the vendors out there the three gentlemen that uh, we met with at the airport uh, some of the uh, aviation leaders at the state level uh, who we've been communicating with are willing to participate on the advisory as well. So I think uh, we're uh, in a position to 
pursue and I feel good about the uh, opportunity to start the program. It's just that I don't think it would be possible for us to have it for next year because we don't have a place to put it. Um, and he's hoping to, to get his hangar. He would like to get it done this year. His biggest issue, he says, he's already trying to get some material, which are 18 months out, he told me, uh, for his trusses for his building. It's, it's going to take 18 months for them uh, to, to arrive. So um, it's a long-term uh, effort, but um, if we could start at the following program, I'd feel good about it. And I spoke to the department, some of the officials at the Department of Ed, <coughs> about running uh, maybe an exploratory program here on, on site, which um, we could do something like that, but that wouldn't be considered Chapter 74 program, uh, a Chapter 74, because uh, they wouldn't approve that. It doesn't mean you can't run such a thing. Uh, it just means we wouldn't get funded for it, so we'd be running it without funds. We'd, use, we'd have to use our own funds to do that. Um, uh, but they'd still be considered, uh, you know, we'd get Chapter 70 funding, but we just wouldn't get Chapter 74 funding, because uh, it wouldn't be a Chapter 74 program. The danger of doing that is uh, if we got into a uh, problem with getting the hangar done in time, we'd have a, a second year group of students that would have no place to educate them. So I would be a little hesitant to do that. Uh, and the department won't approve a program until they see the space, the equipment, the curriculum, that everything is totally done uh, before we start a, uh, a ninth grade program. So they would uh, recommend that we don't do that. but. That is always an option that we could do if we thought for sure that that space would be available by 10th grade. So um, I'll keep the committee updated as we continue to do this. But the next big step, I think, is having our advisory committee meeting, which uh, once we have that uh, solidly in place, I'll, I'll let the committee, uh, I'll report back to the committee on the progress of that. Um, and we do have, we've uh, reached out to one of our city officials that's very interested in being part of the of our uh, advisory committee, which we're very interested in having that person. So we'll reach out also to some of the uh, uh, vendors within the city that we may work with, because we want to include as many uh, uh, stakeholders as we can involved in the project. Uh, thank you. Any questions? A oh, hangar is a, it's like a big metal building that they can put airplanes in. So if you go to the airport, you see these big buildings and airport, air, air, it's like a garage for airplanes. So. Okay, I got it. See? I made you stand. <laughs> so, okay, so hangar, I know, hangar is the garage for planes. I understood that you said this funding is coming from Chapter 70. So, if we were to start a program, well, the funding for this program, uh, we might use. Sorry. So, one of the things we're pursuing, we're hoping Capital Skills Grant comes out. That would be, we would be putting in for the equipment for this particular program, we'd be looking to. Uh, pursue um, a capital skills grant, which can go as high, it can be anywhere from 500,000 to 1.5 million. And there are a few times the state has given 1.5 million to start exceptional programs. So I don't know if they would do that in this case, but we would, uh, that's what we're hoping at some point that a capital skills grant come out uh, in uh, within uh, sometime this year. There's probably one due sometime this year we expect which we would then put an application in for. In terms of leasing, we would, we would uh, may have to go to our, our legislators to uh, pursue the opportunity to lease and funding for that, um, because that might be a, a more substantial cost. And uh, if you want to lease for more than five years, it has to be approved by the, uh, by the legislators. And we would want to lease for longer than five years because we would want to put all this effort and work into a five year and only have a five year lease. So that's something that we would probably, we may go for a five year lease to get the program up and running and then pursue legislation to expand that lease um, uh, because um, 
that's something we we think is very important so there is a lot of you know uh, work to be done in order to be make this become a reality but we think that the opportunities and the growth in the industry uh, warrants because the training they get for uh, becoming to work in in, a, uh, uh, in this industry goes beyond just airports. It, it's very a lot of the aspects of this industry are very similar to our uh, robotic automation program with regards to the uh, the career areas that uh, uh, that are involved, such as electrical, hydraulics, uh, programming. These are all s very similar competencies that we will be that we do teach in the uh, robotics automation so there's some crossover there so um, uh, we feel good about that because then we may be able to do some cross training and some uh, education that uh, that uh, reduces our costs but also uh, has a bigger impact on opportunities for even our students that might be taking robotics any other questions for mr. is this any other questions Sarah, any other questions? No, you'll set, Ms. Marmo. Uh, this is just more of a comment. Um, I want to thank the superintendent for uh, making this possible. Um, when I was first appointed back in February, um, I want to make sure that I recognize uh, City Councilor from District D, Giovanni Rodriguez, who came to me um, letting me know about this opportunity and the fact that you were able to hear me out in a meeting and kind of making this happen i just want to show my appreciation and and i'm thankful that um you saw that this is an amazing idea that our school will definitely benefit from and our students um especially from the community of lawrence but um just in general every serving community will benefit from it um but i'm just excited to see students especially from the city of lawrence who um are not normally exposed to an industry such as aviation and for our school to be um, one of the first ones uh, in the Merrimack Valley to have that um, I'm just I'm, I'm super excited to to see it happen so thank you Mr. Superintendent. so there there's only one uh, school in the state that has such a program uh, chapter 74 program and that's in Westfield um, so we would be the second uh, program in the state and the first in this area thank you any other questions okay um, what was the other you had um, aviation environmental environment. environmental science and which one is the other and one? And the other one is a PG, looking at a PG, PG program for um, robotics automation, which I will bring the committee more information about that in, in a future uh, meeting. It's something we're looking at. We don't know if it's something uh, the committee would be comfortable with, but we had to put the paperwork in um, before the uh, uh, middle of October, so we put it in, and then we're putting uh, data and information together so if we decide to pursue it, we've got at least step one done. Okay. Thank you. No further questions? RFP for the field project, Superintendent? Uh, I like to table this at this time. This is for uh, phase four, where we had all that fill put in, but we're looking to do an RFP. Uh, I think we have a few different uh, organizations that are interested in uh, uh, completing the project so we're just bringing in the fill we don't actually totally need we could utilize another field would help us in terms of our programming but um, what we're trying to do is have an organization that's interested in completing that project uh, through some kind of a lease and then we would benefit from uh, that uh, project itself for the time that our students would be able to use it so we're not ready to put the lease out there I'm not ready to present a uh, RFP yet we're still doing some work with that and I need the attorney to look at the final uh, document so I will be moving forward with some RFP to the committee very soon Can I move the table any questions all in favor Emissions report to Mr. Superintendent. So you should have a copy. 
I believe you see the copy of where we're at with admissions at this point although I don't see it here uh, well we've been we have done I believe once is it further back oh here it is yeah so if you uh, if you look at the report you have you have two documents in there uh, one is somewhat contradictory the other but right now uh, we have 700 and 782 app, uh, applications for uh, the upcoming school year which is an, a, an enormous amount of applications uh, probably three 350 more than we typically have at this time um, and um, we believe we're going to have uh, well over the typical last year we had almost 1300 we believe we're probably going to have somewhere in the 1500 range this year so we continue to get more and more students that are applying to the school um, if you look at the second page it says 562 and that's because it's different time frames in which this report was done so this is the most recent where you see 782 applicants to this point have applied to come to GLTS yeah Chair, just want to know about the 841. It says last 30 day 841 for you. You have a total of 782, but that um, number is graded. Does that make sense? The 840, the last 30 days, 841. What that means is those oh, some of those are pending. Uh, they're not complete. We didn't get all the information. So we're still waiting for more information. So 782 is the completed yeah, that one. Have com right. 841 is just. Yeah. Right. Some interest in their applications are not complete. Mr. Uh, Mr. Rossi? Yes. Looks like nothing. Thank you, Mike. We haven't. Uh, the question was does North Andover does not look like it has anything? We haven't received any. Yeah, North Andover doesn't have any uh, students. Uh, we haven't uh, received any applications yet. Doesn't mean that uh, we haven't gotten any from the sending sending district yet, uh, or from any individuals yet. So, and we haven't vi we haven't visited the school as of yet either. Uh, the North Andover Middle School we haven't been to yet. Yeah, I'm all set. Thank you. Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. I, have any schools been visited yet, or are all of these applications just on our being so awesome? Yep. So uh, we've done a virtual uh, visit so far. One school we've visited. We are ratcheting up our, uh, we're going to start doing in-person visits starting next week. So you'll see these numbers go up substantially uh, after that. After that, those visits, we typically get a lot more applications. And the open house is coming up also. So uh, after that, we typically get a lot more also. Thank you. Ms. Fitzgerald, I mean, um, Ms. Parmo. Superintendent, you just mentioned that starting next week, you will start visiting in person uh, to some of these schools. Are you able to notify us, whether it's via email, um, to all sc school committee members, um, the dates and the school that you will be visiting? Because we often get questions by parents who are interested and have questions. So if we're able to better, better inform them um, of your upcoming visit, um, that could potentially help. And I also wanted to remind you that um, I'm also interested in obtaining information of when we'll have um, the possibility of doing tours and I believe you said that that's to be determined correct yes so um, um, tours what kind of tours for students who are interested and parents as well in visiting the school and taking a tour yep so in terms of um, I can I can get a document out to that lists the schools and the dates if I believe 
our director of guidance has her schedule completed so I'll ask her to share that with me so I can get that out to you and as far as the tours we haven't we're looking at uh, the possibility of doing uh, possibly doing some kind of a in-person open house later on in the year when we feel that uh, it's safe to do so John quick question uh, do we see an influx now I'm looking at the numbers of application do we see a huge influx of um, transfers out of Lawrence well we've we've had a lot of calls uh, of parents uh, wanting to transfer their students here that their son or daughters from Lawrence uh, but we don't have any openings at this point for transfers so uh, we have seen a, a, a large interest from Lawrence parents calling over uh, to, to inquire about that so once an opening does become available are you taking into consideration those students that have applied and did not get in um, or were on the waiting list as opposed to um, approving a student to to uh, enroll when they haven't initially applied to begin with so typically we don't take students in after October 1st because we're only funded for the students so if we take any students we take after October 1st we're not they're not uh, we don't get funds for those students uh, so we don't typically take it's not that we have sometimes certain circumstances uh, under certain circumstances like if a student's uh, transferred into this district from another technical high school we might consider something like that junior year or senior year but uh, it's not something that we typically commonly do uh, because of the funding uh, opportunities so we wouldn't get funds for those students next year so the funding after, before October 1st we could transfer the money comes with them after October 1st the money stays at the school they used to be they transferred from no. I, I just had a quick question uh, the superintendent with where is this uh, school the Richardson middle school we've got one student that's one, applied. one application yes might be a private school I'm, I'm not even sure to be honest with you okay No, not enough hand over. No. Uh, it's under other. Do you know? Uh, Just justice. Justice. Middle school. No. I've never seen it either. Well, we get. Superintendent can give you the information later on. Um, is this the? Yeah. Uh, actually, Mr. Rossi, you still have any other questions? No. Okay. Is this the? Then. Just back to the the answer about the transfer not being possible before after October first. It could be possible, but uh, it will be the funding will stay with the former school. So so. Generally speaking, we do not take transfer after October. 1st. Right, we don't typically take students in after October first. I, for some reason, I have something in my head that students can transfer after January. I don't know why I'm coming up with that. Is, yeah. is that something that we've done? Students, oh. can, students can transfer to any school. The fortunate part is their funding that goes with a student stays with the other school. Um, I don't think we've we don't do that because of a funding issue. I don't think most schools won't do it either, unless it's within the same district. So if the school is, if the student is in the charter school, Lawrence Charter School, and is going to Lawrence Public School, okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have a, do, um, a date for, like an end date for for, to, uh, to accept applications? Do we have a set date that when we're not going to take more applications? We, we have a, uh, open enrollment, but we typically uh, encourage uh, the end of February 
is when we start to accept students. Um, so the end of February, we encourage to have all applications in by the end of February. If you want to uh, be part of that first round of acceptance, other than that, you're, it's much more difficult to be accepted if you put your application after. But we do have an open enrollment all the way, all the way through the summer. There's no end date in terms of when you can apply. Ms. Marmo, you had a question? Um, yeah, it was just going back to my original question, and I appreciate the, um, the information regarding the funding. But my question was, if there was ever a time that an open spot is available are we just considering a student that is currently on the waiting list no we don't typically go to our waiting list after october 1st on on waivers i mean on uh, on transfers okay so we accept the transfer student that didn't initially apply like I'm just maybe I'm not ans uh, asking so the question if appropriately. So the students on the waiting list on the, the waiting list after October first is a transfer. Um, so after October first, we're not accepting transfers. Any new students that are coming into the school on outside of they're moving into the district, um, it's a different story. Correct, Mr. Superintendent? Yes. Uh, but other than that, any new students are usually freshmen who will be starting in the beginning of the year. Correct. That's correct. Actually, she still has the floor. No, that, that doesn't mean that as far as that's our, that's typically what we've done. Not to say that we haven't made exceptions in the past. We have, depending on a certain circumstance. Uh, but typically, uh, we live by that uh, policy. Yeah. What she was asking. Because I think her quotes, I believe what she's looking for is to know if an opening becomes available, then we go to the waiting list because we don't, we're not taking transfers. So the answer is yes, right? If there's an opening uh, in a beyond, the, so if there's an opening, let's say in carpentry in the 10th grade, uh, we wouldn't take a transfer, but we would see we would take a transfer from within the school. So if a student was an automotive, wanted to go to carpentry, we would take a transfer. Yes. Yes, I was just going to maybe add a little clarification um, where there have been exceptions. Let's say a family moves from Billerica. Their student, their son or daughter was a student at Shoshin Tech and they now move to one of our four sending communities, it would be more likely that we would make the exception for that student because they're coming from within a school that had the same frameworks curriculum as ours. And if there was an opening in that particular shop that they were in, it would be very easy um, to do that since they were now a member of our community and it doesn't happen often but it does same thing if one of our students were conversely moving to Bill Ricker or Lowell or whatever we would hope that they would be accepted at either Greater Lowell or Shoshin Tech so um, but as the point we had made uh, two weeks ago that we were hoping that if any new students were brought in because there were openings they would be coming off our original waiting list and not someone who was now just asking to come yeah um any other questions Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Um, principal's report, Ms. Zelinsky. Good evening, thank you. Um, I know that you got, you received a copy of the MCAS results in your packet. I also want to note that there was a spelling error there. Um, so I want to apologize for that. It's been corrected in our report. Um, so um, we had the opportunity to hear Maureen tonight. I hope you enjoyed the student representative report. I'll be sharing that later. 
I also just wanted to um, review our MCAS results. As we all know, last year, MCAS was kind of touch and go, but we um, were able to complete the assessment. And I want to share that um, overall, we have some great results. We had, for English, learner, uh, English language arts, we had 387 students test. 22 of those students uh, scored in the exceeding category. We had 198 in the meeting category. 176 in partially meeting, and uh, we had 29 students that were not meeting. Um, the charts that you're seeing are looking at percentages, but I also just wanted to share the numbers so you can have a context. Um, so overall, if you see the results, um, you know, we, we really, even though during the pandemic, um, it, it was still, we did not dip down. Um, for math, we had 386 students test. Um, we had eight students exceed expectations in the math, 118 meeting expectation, 257 students partially meeting, 43 students not meeting, and we did have eight students that did not take the math test. So we had a total of 51 in that not meeting for math. I also just wanted to share the overall proficiency rate. Uh, that shows a comparison from some of our sending districts as well as comparable schools. And um, for ELA, you can see we're at 93%, um, um, which is impressive compared to the state and where we're at. Um, for our English learners and former English learners, which is a category that we uh, that is tracked by the Department of Ed, um, overall the proficiency rate is 76%, um, again, beating the state average of 59% and, um, you know, pretty especially with last year, the results overall very pleased with that. Our students with disabilities also um, aligned and matched the state results um, for ELA. And finally, math, you can also see uh, that we had math at 93%, a little bit um, ahead of the state uh, for our English learners, 76% for English learners and uh, former English learners for percentages of proficiency, and our students with disability, again, at 72%. So overall, we had a success rate for our uh, grade 10 students during a very difficult time in taking the test. Some of them, it was the first time they had come into the building, uh, or they were just now returning. Um, so shout out to all the students for their performance, as well as all the instructors that worked hard. Um, it was you know, MCAS is on, MCAS is off, and so it was right up into the end, um, so overall. Um, I also just wanna share what we're doing. Uh, we are right now in the process of preparing for a retest for all those students that um, were not in, in the not meeting category. We uh, sent letters home to uh, families of all with all their results, but any student that did um, not meet, we met with them individually and also reached out with an opportunity to attend an after-school MCAS um, support. And we have those going on right now, Tuesday and Thursdays after school uh, with a late bus at 4.30. Um, the retest is coming up pretty quickly and we are making preparations to so November 17th, it starts. We're making preparations to make sure that we have um, the uh, right set up for those students to, to retest. We also, our data and assessment specialist, was able to share the results out with the uh, the specific results with the teachers, the, the grade 10 teachers that had the students last year, as well as their current teachers in grade 11. So those students can look at the, uh, up like down to the question level and do some analysis and, and, and support the students in front of them. Uh, this was back in September, but it was past our last meeting. So I did just wanna um, share that we had a successful summer reading um, it was September 21st. It was a school-wide summer reading. Uh, tip, it was a little different this year because of COVID and precautions. We didn't have students sign up for any book and we kept students within wherever they were at during their period three and four class. And they did their summer reading. Um, they had multiple books to choose from all around the theme of resilience. And um, it, was, it was pretty powerful to walk through the building that day and hear students um, talking about books and making connections to um, other literature as well as their own lives. Um, again, it's a great opportunity. You can see um, you know, whether they were in English that period or they were in shop. Um, all faculty uh, participated. 
we had great discussions and uh, again shout out to the faculty for making that um, a great day we were unsure of how we were going to do it with COVID but I think that the um, alternative to what we did last year worked out well and um, lastly if you didn't have an opportunity to take a look at it I'd ask that you uh, take a minute to go to our website and take a look to our virtual back to school night um, having back to school night in person is probably a lot easier than arranging one virtually um, but again um, each department uh, made a video a welcome video whether it's academic by grade level as well as CTE areas and support areas um, the virtual back to school night is still available on our website so um, a shout out to the work um, for the administrative team and Stephanie um, Infante that kind of put that together and planned it as well as to all the teachers that um, you know made those videos I want to commend you and your team on all the hard work, especially around MCAS. Look, I was looking at the numbers, and and I'm glad you clarified all the support that um, those kids are are getting. And this has been a very difficult time, even for MCAS and for them coming back. I want to thank you guys for everything you you guys do, superintendent, um, principal, and everybody. Any other any comments, questions, Leo? Yeah, I also would like to. Uh, Thank you. I'd also like to commend the students themselves, uh, the teachers, uh, the uh, administration, uh, you know, for these numbers. Uh, we don't need to share them publicly, but uh, I mean, I know they are public, but we don't need to share them tonight of uh, how we did with our sending communities. Uh, I think we did, uh, we did very well. And also it was asked that what, uh, what type of documents uh, you, you compile when evaluating a superintendent. This is one of them. Comments? Um, John Denmistinsky. So I uh, just want to, I don't think you can understate the performance of uh, our students. When you talk about our students, also you're talking about the performance of our instructors and all the support staff that was out there last year, everything from you know our guidance counselors um, to our uh, technology uh, department that supported all our efforts last year and to see these results and how it impacted. Um, it's amazing how well the stu students did, um, you know, outperforming pretty much all of our, in terms of in terms of proficiency, uh, our ratings are just uh, really amazing. I think in the uh, outcome that we've had as a result of that, the only community that we were really close to but didn't quite outperform was Andover, which, uh, but uh, and that's not to understate the hard work that every other community did. They did do very hard work, but I think um, that we were very fortunate in the support that and the ability to, to to meet these high standards based on the preparation that was done by administrators by teachers uh, and I think a big shout out needs to go to our interim principal at the time which was Suzelinski who had to take a lot of responsibility in pulling all this together because was on her watch that the students took uh, the MCAS so big shout out to the principal for uh, coordinating and doing all this hard work uh, that helped to promote this great success. So thanks to Sue as well. I also just forgot to share that the superintendent and I have also already been in discussion about the MCAS uh, for this year. We want to um, make sure that we um, get some like supports for students and opportunities to kind of um, get additional um, some time some additional instructional time um, after school we want to try and start it earlier than we normally do so we're already in discussions about this year for those who underperform does it become mandatory for them to attend these um, extra instructional days or is it based on you know personal um, how could I say it like yeah. based on their own decision that they want to participate so we do strongly encourage it, encourage it and also if a student hasn't um, passed and it is a graduation requirement um, there's an educational performance plan that they have to follow and one of the uh, components of that educational performance plan is um, attendance in opportunities and something like that so we, 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 we try to make sure that we have that built in okay. and encourage it 
Any other questions? Once again, I want to th commend everybody in the school um, for such an amazing job. Thank you. Capital Improvement Project Daycare Center. Mr. Superintendent. So uh, I'm, uh, I just wanted to give the committee a heads up that I'm uh, looking at uh, the possibility of opening up a daycare center as a tool or uh, opportunity to retain teachers. Uh, I know other schools that have done it and have found great success in uh, having a place where staff could bring their, uh, their children uh, in, in a daycare center within the school space, uh, which uh, the benefits to it are, number one, it allows uh, parents to uh, uh, make it more convenient to come in with the student, drop them with their son or daughter, pick them, bring them home. And also you find that many more st uh, staff members uh, are become more active in after school uh, initiatives uh, because it gives them that opportunity to, to allow uh, those students to stay, uh, those children to stay till four o'clock in a, in a program like that. It also helps in uh, recruiting uh, quality instructors. Uh, so it's some, something we're looking at that I will bring more information to the, uh, to the uh, to the uh, school committee once we have more data put together and more information to, to share with you to uh, show that uh, the value that it brings, uh, that it would bring to GLTS to have such a system. Uh, I understand. I, I actually didn't know where you're going with that. Um, I actually like the idea. Uh, and it does bring a huge value when you have employees that can bring their kids. Miss um, Marmo, then Mr. Lamontagne, then Ms. Disler. Well, I was going to make a suggestion to uh, move to dis for discussion. Um, I know we're so quick to move to approve, and um, I want to allow the opportunity to continue to further discuss since um, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable making, you know, making decisions to approve on something without having any additional information on the spot. Um, as I'm listening to you, it's like, yeah, it sounds like a great idea, but I have further questions, um, such as, is this going to be free of cost for teachers? Is this something that will be a fee? Um, so I, I'm pretty sure there's other questions that may come up, but since I don't have anything on hand, what was that? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just information. Oh, I, I well, think here he's it says recommendation. It. I'm going by the agenda. It says uh, motion to approve. Okay, that's why I'm like, I wanted to make a motion to discuss before we even um he's on we only discussing this he there's not enough information to make a motion on yeah I, I don't know if the i i didn't hear the superintendent say also down the road uh the plan is to possibly work this into a, a chapter 74 program a vocational program am i right john uh, yes, that's correct. So we would look at opening up as a daycare and, and then pursue the idea of uh, an early childhood uh, program, which some of the vocational schools have. Are we anticipating where a space, do we have a space for daycare? So we are looking at a space we think that would work. Um, but we haven't really finalized that. That would be part of uh, the, um, I would bring to the committee and see if they thought that space was favorable. But we are looking at a couple different spaces that we feel would work uh, that have outside access for kids. That would be safe outside access. Any further question? Ms. This, um, Ms. Marmel? Do you have an idea as to how many uh, children we um, we have the ability to to receive? No, oh, all of that would have to be figured out um, in determining how big the program we'd want the uh, uh, program to be. We certainly would look at what our staff needs are in making that decision, so we could support as many staff as possible. Um, different schools do it different ways, but some even allow grandparents to bring their kids, their uh, grandchildren, 
uh, in in the, you know, if they're working here at the school. So uh, a lot of that would depend on you know what the data shows us the need is, and also we would do a uh, put out a survey to our staff to see what interest is. I think that's important to understand and know before we even uh, pursue uh, any. Uh, deeper efforts that we put into this, but we are looking at cost, data, uh, space, all those issues uh, that we will uh, have a more uh, extended uh, report for you to make a decision on. But I didn't want to all of a sudden you start hearing that we're looking at this and then say, well, we didn't hear anything about this. So I, I wanted to give the committee an up, uh, first, be the first ones to hear. Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, to Vivian, the state regulations include how it, it would all depend on the site that uh, here within the building because you have to have X number of square feet per child that you're taking care of and so on and so on. So the state would probably be the determining factor on how many we could take once we have decided on what area we're. It also includes age groups, um, and because based on the number of students, you also have to have a adult person as well. So there's a lot more factors to it than, but um, it's a good start to start having that conversation. Thank you, Superintendent. Um, committee report, seeing none. So do we have the policies update? Okay, that's fine. Uh, district committee priorities, none. Any new business? Ms. Um, Not sure if this is the right time to bring it up, but I wanted to take an opportunity to ask about um, the district committee meetings that we had discussed in previous in our previous meetings uh, regarding having them streamed through YouTube. Um, I, I normally try to inform um, uh, parents about our, our meetings and I usually try to let them know how they could uh, view it, whether it's streaming or via the, your, your uh, GLTS Facebook account. And I was about to add YouTube as an option and then I was like, okay, let me double check if it's there. and. I couldn't seem to find, uh, so it should be at least two previous meetings um, that should be already on the YouTube site. So I just wanted to follow up on that. Uh, we can uh, add uh, to our next meeting a report on uh, that possibility for uh, using YouTube as a as a source for streaming out there is that what you're saying or is that what you oh for uh, oh you mean for uh uh saving the uh the streams that we do do okay so, so do you mind repeating what you just said superintendent so it, it, to uh to um save the uh streams the the videos that we do each from each meeting save each meeting in youtube so that was already decided and you had agreed yep. or the committee so that we had can voted do that. in favor yep. or approved that the meetings not only will it be streamed as well as it um on the youtube archived, but it, that it right. will be archived there right, as well that's the word i was looking for so yes it, it should it should have been already streaming there and i okay. i don't happen to see them so that's why i wanted to follow oh, okay. up okay so i will follow up with our uh, tech department to see uh, if there's been some issue with trying to do that uh, and if not uh, I'll make sure that it gets done for the next meeting actually could you haven't come to the next meeting our uh, technology director yeah sure Ms. Marmel I also wanted to take an opportunity under new business to um, because I felt that it was unfinished business in our last meeting. Um, I believe I had mentioned uh, when we were discussing regarding ESSER funds and I questioned on the use of badges 
Um, and I, I want to highlight and refer to you, Superintendent, that um, on the August 17 minutes, it was discussed um, and it was approved with the badges being used as part of the reopening plan. I'm not sure if you needed me to bring up the, the excerpt from those August 17 minutes, um, but that's something I wanted to add because I would like to have a little more understanding, even though you gave, um, you gave a reason in our last meeting as to the, the reason why the, the, the badges are not being used, but because it was already approved on the reopening plan to use them, um, I guess I'm left wondering if, if there ever was a point where because of X, Y, Z reasons that uh, you have determined that it, it is no longer justifiable to use them, shouldn't that have come up to the school committee to then modify um, what was already approved on the reopening plan? So, so if we had voted on August, if the committee had voted on August 17th and uh, to move that forward, I would have, uh, apparently I, I missed it and not coming back to the committee with the rationale not to do it. So that would be on me for, um, for having missed um, uh, the uh, the minutes themselves and everything going on and being so busy, I guess I never even thought to come back to the committee uh, for a revote on that. And uh, so that's definitely uh, um, it's my mistake. Can you put that for the next meeting? Absolutely, uh, sure. And the information would need. Um, as well absolutely any new business anything else on your business hearing none uh, resignations mr. president we have one resignation uh, uh, EL paraprofessional effective October 29th uh, this person uh, is moving to s the Springfield area and so uh, she has resigned her position here. Um, I believe uh, it's a posting we're looking for uh, further down on job postings to replace that person. Any questions on that? No? You have apps? None. On retirement? None. Appointments? None. None. No. Uh, job postings? So we're looking. Uh, I. We're looking to hire a, uh, a full-time school nurse, um, and I, I gave you a document that I uh, outlines why, I won't go through all of it, but it kind of outlines what are some of the challenges we're having uh, with the, uh, down in the nurse's uh, uh, office in the nurse's area, what, what the need is. But uh, at the, about you know, an hour before this meeting, <coughs> I was informed that one of our nurses was resigning, uh, gave us a two-week resignation. Uh, so we, now we need two school nurses. We need to post for two school nurses. Um, we're desperately in need of getting some support. That will only leave us with one full-time school nurse. Uh, we're struggling with two, and sometimes we have uh, someone that comes in two days a week to help us. And then, of course, we use NARI almost every day as well. Uh, in order to try to keep up with um, all the challenges that uh, have come up uh, being such a difficult year with COVID. And, the, and so I've outlined all of those issues, or I should say, I, I didn't outline this. This is coming from our uh, Director of Guidance who oversees the nursing department. I thought she did a good job kind of outlining, you know, what are some of the issues between staffing and, and the impact of COVID and uh, the other priorities that have, uh, responsibilities that have uh, increased because of COVID and the reporting that we have to do to the department and the, excuse me, Department of Education in the state around COVID has increased their workload as well. So uh, we are uh, desperate to uh, be able to uh, post for two, two nurse, full-time nurses. So moved. Superintendent, you're asking for two 
positions? Or two yes, one? two. Originally it was one, it's listed as one here, but because of what I received an hour ago or before the meeting, um, we really should post for two at this point. Discussion? There's a motion on the table made by Mr. Lamonte, seconded by um, Ms. Fitzgerald. Here, no discussion. Roll call, Sue. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. Ms. Disla? Yes. Mr. Lamonte? Yes. Ms. Mamel? Yes. And Mr. Cirillo? Yes. EL um, paraprofessional. We're looking for an EL paraprofessional. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a question um, on on the uh, nurses. When you, uh, how many are, are in that position right now? So, we have three nurses that are in the position, but one is on a a, a leave. Um, we don't. We don't expect that she'll be back this year, um, but it's there's no uh, no indication of when that nurse may return, um, uh, based on some personal issues that are are keeping her from coming back this year. We believe. So we're down to one. Right? So we'll be down one, in two weeks. We'll be down to one nurse. Yes. Para. So we're uh, looking to fill the uh, position of the EL paraprofessional that uh, has resigned. So moved. Second. Questions? Brokosum? Mr. Rossi? Yes. Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. Ms. Disla? Yes. Mr. Lamontang? Yes. Ms. Mamel? Yes. And Mr. Cirillo? So we're looking to uh, put two vocational hire two vocational paraprofessionals uh, <coughs> to uh, work in the vocational uh, area in order to uh, give our because of the um, changes to the uh, to the schedule uh, our shop teachers are not able to get any preps this year and so in order to help uh, with that uh, we would like to hire two paraprofessionals uh, and the and with the hopes of next year being uh, special ed support staff paraprofessionals uh, for special ed students next year so it would give us a year to train them as well um, and uh, these are new positions so we would not fill these positions until our uh, ESSER 2 and ESSER 3 uh, grants have been uh, final, finally approved which then we would have uh, once those are approved we feel that there would be funding available in our operational uh, funds for that. And um, <coughs> we know that uh, ESSER II um, amendments, we expect those to get approved uh, very soon because we had just one question regarding that uh, the other day that we responded to the Department of Ed uh, uh, this morning. So we uh, suspect that that will be coming through very soon. And the ESSER three, the only thing holding up the ESSER three is because we had capital uh, improvement projects that goes through an additional um, uh, review. And so uh, that's the only reason that's taken a little bit longer. So uh, when those have been approved, then we would like, once the ESSER two has finalized, uh, we would like then to hire two vocational paraprofessionals. The uh, para for vocational different than the regular paras the requirements? They're, they're not different in that what we will be seeking is uh, paraprofessionals uh, that meet the, uh, the regulations um, and uh, we hope to train them uh, in the different programs uh, and utilize them in the future uh, to support special ed students uh, in the following year. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Vivian, discussion? I just had a question under education and experience. Um, it says associate's degree or passing score on the para pro test. Is that? Uh, That's standard for any para. Um, you either have to have an associate's degree or you have to have to pass the para pro exam. So is the, is the 
Not, not both is required. Okay. So if they have an associate's degree, then they're qualified in the, within the state of Massachusetts to be a paraprofessional. If they don't have an associate's degree, then they have to have a passing score on the parapro test. And the nearest parapro center is in Lawrence for the examinations. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. Ms. Disla? Yes. Mr. Lamontagne? Yes. Ms. Mamo? Yes. And Mr. Cirillo? Yes. Staff member to destroy and scan special ed guidance um, records, Superintendent? So uh, we have substantial. Hey, Mike. We have a substantial amount of documentation that needs to be destroyed when it's seven years or older. Um, we have a backlog that. Uh, is causing us to have an enormous amount of files, so those need to be destroyed. Uh, we would hire two staff members who would work with the special ed and the guidance department to determine which of those files should be destroyed. They, what they shred them, and then uh, any file, any documents that are uh, less than seven seven years or less, we have to. We would. Uh, we're looking to scan them into our electronic system so that. Uh, it's much faster and easier to access these documents, and uh, often there where we we get requests uh, either from uh, uh, secondary uh, post-secondary programs, or in some cases for uh, students that are looking to get their licenses for their hours and and those things. So um, uh, it becomes very difficult to find these uh, actual files at times, but. Uh, also to allow us to have more space. We're desperate for uh, space, for uh, office space, and these are taking up an enormous amount of space. So uh, it's, uh, we expect that uh, two staff members uh, should be able to complete this task in uh, two, two days, uh, working two Saturdays, um, and uh, they would be paid based on the uh, school contract, based on the contract. So moved. Can I get a motion? Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Future, thank you, Sue. Future item, agenda items. Can I get a motion to go into executive session? So moved. I have a request for the chairman. Uh, yep. If I could, do you, I would, uh, through the chair, if uh, you, we could invite the uh, district treasurer uh, into executive session for the purpose of letter B, and only letter B, the discussion of that. There's a motion on the table. Um, no, you I, don't need a, you don't need a motion. If yeah, you, no, I agree. You could call you. it, uh, but there's a motion on the table for executive session, and yes, does the, um, Jerry come in? Um, is there a second? Second. Roll call, Sue. Mr. Rossi. Yes. Ms. Fitzgerald. Yes. Ms. Disla. Mr. Lamontagne. Yes. Ms. Mamo. Yes. And Mr. Cirillo. We'll be coming back here to adjourn, and then take any votes if need be.
Mr. Rossi. Yes, you want to go. <laughs> Mr. Fitz, Ms. Fitzgerald, yes. Ms. Disla. Yes. Mr. LaMontagne. Yes. Ms. Marmo. Yes. Mr. Cirillo. And it is 8... 848. <laughs> stay warm, stay dry. All of the above. Uh,